Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to hear the story of my dad, also known as the Lock Father, on how he actually got going locksmithing. Dad, how's it going? It's going, thanks for having me. You know, it really, it dawned on me about a week or so ago that out of all the videos that we've done together, right. we've actually not talked about how you started locksmithing. And um, I figured, hey, let's share the story. It's actually a pretty good one. Yeah, it is. So if you could kind of take us back, uh, what year, how old were you when you started um, locksmithing? Well, I actually went into business in 80. but So it was 78, 79. Okay. I was 22. So you're 22 years old. And before you were locksmithing, what were you actually like doing for a living or jobs? Or right. I was a, a foreman in a bulk mailing house where I kept the equipment running, plus keeping the guys, you know, making sure they're running the equipment correctly. Okay. Getting the jobs done. Okay. So you, stuffing envelopes by machines and uh, putting the labels, like the Rolling Stone magazine, we did all those. Okay. For the whole United States. Okay. And we should also say this is in Southern California. Yes. Right? At the time. So you're doing that. So you're doing that. Did, did, did you have any other jobs? Yeah, I was pumping gas so I could earn money to buy equipment for locksmithing. Okay. And uh, so you're doing bulk mailing. Right. And you were pumping gas outside of your normal full time right. job. At what point, like, up until that point, did you ever really hear about locksmithing? Was it ever on your radar? Or or like before you heard of it, I should say, um, what were you thinking about doing in life? Like for a career? Like I knew I wanted to be self-employed. Okay. Because I'd get stressed out to the hill doing the bulk mailing because, you know, it's uh, time, you know, sensitive stuff. Yeah. And I go, geez, let me make the money. And, you know, that's why I knew I was going to be. But... When I was pumping gas, uh, one of my school friends went to high school with came in and he was in a locksmith van. Ken? And I go, oh, what's this? This looks pretty cool. And he told me all about it. And uh, he goes, man, I make more than most of the school teachers. And I go, really? And I'm going, cha-ching, you know? Yeah. Uh, so... He said, you know, if you want, you can ride around with me. Mm -hmm. right, so on Saturdays, if I wasn't working, I'd ride around. Just like, as you going out doing jobs, lockouts, yeah. making keys, ring I was, keys. You know, shotgun. Yeah. And watched them and asked questions. And he was always more than willing for me to come around and do it. Okay. You know. Okay. And would, then. Would stop and get a Tommy's burger and then go to his cousin's. A bakery and pig out, you know, what's better? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was going on. Now, of course, I was born in 84. Right. So all of this is happening before. Before. Right. And so at some point, you decided that you wanted to start your own locksmithing business. Right. What was the thought process behind that? Like, what did that look like? Were you like, I need to get some schooling? I, you know, like, talk to us about well, that. Well, yeah, my mom came home and said, hey, I got a card, you know, at this key booth and they have a locksmithing school. And I go, oh. And she goes, that'd be perfect for you because you're good with your hands. And I go, I don't know, mom, you know, because of the reading and writing. I hate that stuff. Yeah. Still do. But yeah. uh, then finally went, talked to him. It was three hours, three times a week at night at the school. And they gave you the basics of basics. Yeah. And then... Something's better than nothing. Right. right. And then driving around with Brad, Spectre. Hi, Brad, if you're out there. Uh, he stills the locksmith today. And uh, he actually got in touch with me because he saw one of the videos where I was. And he goes, geez, you haven't changed, you know. <laughs> but he, he was courteous enough to let me drive around with him. Yeah. Every Saturday. Yeah. And I mean all day. Yeah. And uh, he taught me a lot of stuff I still use today. I mean, I teach my people a lot of stuff he taught me. Yeah. It'd be fun to actually get, get 
Brad on camera and kind of like talk to him about the Pete he knew <laughs> at 22. Yeah, right. Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. So, so you're doing that. So you go to the school. Uh, you're still working at the right. mailing, bulk right. mailing, at and one, pumping gas, and pumping gas because I needed a truck. Yep. So I went to the junkyard because I couldn't afford much. Bought an old '66 mail. Uh, like a UPS truck, okay, and rebuilt it from the ground up. Had it painted, lettered. Yep. Is that though? It's kind of like a cream color. No, it's the yellow one. Yellow. Okay. And then after I outgrew that, I got the cream one. Okay. Uh, and you know it worked out well. Okay, and so you're you get kind of everything ready. At what point are you like, okay, I need to quit my job and make a go of this. Right. I finally did that. Okay. Quit my job. Mom was working where she had health insurance and whatnot for her. Okay. And I said, well, we don't have any bills, so why don't we... Mom says, why don't we do it now? And so that's what we did. Mom worked, and I sat at home waiting for that phone to ring, but I didn't quit until I got in the yellow pages, and when the yellow pages came out is when I quit my job and went forward. So I just wasn't sitting there. I saw that income, praying that the Yellow Pages was gonna bring me income. Okay, so you signed up for the Yellow Page ads, but you know, it's always like a season or two before when they right. actually come out. So you signed up, you did that, and then you worked until the launch, essentially, right. of this year's Yellow Pages, right. and you timed your um, two-week notice right. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you did that, you're out on your own, and was it just like, boom, magic, busy, making all the money? Don't I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Sat home and watched Oprah. Which she had her <laughs> talk show, you know, <laughs> bored to death. And then I got some jobs, you know, during the weekend uh, or during the week. But I lived on the ranch, so I had to travel a little ways to get to them. Yeah, cause, so you were all, it's, it's a good point to bring up. So you... Um, we're actually like a ranch hand right? on a thousand acre ranch, right? Um, which is now all developed pretty much right, down yep. in LA area. Yeah. Um, so you were doing your the mail job, pumping gas, and something we haven't really talked about was you lived on this thousand acre ranch and you had to do a lot of the duties there. Yeah. Right? right? Take care of the horses. Horses, you know, they had a 30 acre private park where they'd have big events. Okay. And then big companies would run in and I'd go clean up or get it ready for. Gotcha. Okay. So you're doing all of that. So you had a lot of stuff going on. And oh, so I worked 20 hours a day minimum. Yeah. And so you're, so, so you're sitting on the ranch and you're, have your own business now, watching Oprah, hoping that phone's going to ring soon, still doing your. Um, I'm guessing, like, did you do the work on the ranch as, like, trade to live there type of thing? Or Well, I paid 75 bucks a month after I quit working on the ranch as such. Okay. But I still did stuff for them. Gotcha. Okay. So you had all of that going on. At what point did, all of a sudden, you start getting some income? Well, getting a job here and there. And, you know, I didn't have accounts, like, at CLK or wherever. Yeah. So I... I ran it out of my pocket, you know, so I always had a ton of cash on me because when I went to the supply house, you had to pay for it. Oh, pay right there. And, you know, the supply house is 40 miles down the road. <laughs> it's not like, you know, in the big city, you know, that's yeah. away sometimes. And, you know, you never figure out, well, I need this, this, and this, your time to go get it and stuff. Yep. And that's where UPS is great, you know, FedEx, yep. whatever. And you get it the next day and you have a credit card. But when you have no credit card, no money to spend, you have cash to speak of. And you, you go, okay. That's how you did it. Yeah, it's all I could do. And you named the, com the company Country Lost because you lived in the country on the Thousand Acre Ranch. Right. Right? My mom says, that's a stupid name. Why don't you call it Valley? Well, I didn't want to call it Valley. <laughs> And then your mom says, we're calling it country. I said, yes, dear. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit because something big happens. And that is, uh, so you, we're in Southern California. I'm born, right? It's 84, 85. And you decide to move to Idaho. Yes. Right? 
Now, what did you do with the business? Well, I sold the business with the understanding I could take half the stuff. Of the equipment. Right. Okay. In, in stock. And supplies. Okay. And uh, move to Idaho. And, uh, you know, because the little ranch house we lived in, you were in a miniature crib and there still wasn't any room. And in Idaho at that time, I could afford a home. Yeah. Where down there, you, you know, they're outrageous. Yeah. Even more so today. Sure. And uh, so we moved up here. Uh -huh. And so you moved up to Idaho because you felt like you'd be able to buy a house. Better place to raise my kids, I felt, than yeah. I could afford a home. Yeah. You know. And, and your parents had moved up here for retirement. Right. And they said, well, you can afford a house. That's why I came up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I got a little... 220 square foot shop. Yep. My parents go, well, that's a little big, isn't it? <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> well, you got too much stuff, they always said. Uh -huh. I said, no, I don't. I don't have enough. You yeah. know. So I ran it. You know, some days I didn't make a dime. Yeah. So I go, man, I don't have any money to feed my family. I got to get a nighttime job. So I worked at the local newspaper. More like bulk mail type stuff. Yeah, because bulk mail is you insert stuff into magazines, you know, insert stuff into envelopes. Well, they needed somebody to insert flyers into the newspaper. Okay. So I took a nighttime job there. Yeah. I worked from six to three in the morning. And then I went home, tried to sleep for an hour or two. Went to the store, my desk, I could lean my head back on to the workbench, put my feet up on the desk and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little ringer dinger, you know. Yeah. So if somebody came through the door, you know, yeah. I hope I wake up. <laughs> uh-huh. And, you know, I mean, two memories for me back at the time, you know, I was small. Right. But I remember right really close to where your shop was, was a hardware store. Mm -hmm. And you had become like really good buddies at the hardware store because I always remember going there and sitting there. Just bored. hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I also remember going to on the weekends to auctions. Right. That you were like holding stuff yeah, up. Yeah, ring guy, you know. Ring guy is what they call it. You see somebody bidding, you go, yeah, you know. Okay, yeah, just doing that. And I'm a clown, anyways, you know, and everybody liked the entertainment. Okay, yeah, so you're putting a little show on. <laughs> Put a whole 20 bucks the whole day didn't help, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you do some that. free food. Yeah. So when you moved up, it, it was tough. Oh, like absolutely. When you moved, you got reestablished. It was tough. I'd say the first three years were real tough. I thought we were gonna go under. You did. Oh yeah. Even refinanced the house. You know, it took a second to hopefully do. And just then, buy time. Right. And then all of a sudden, it just blossomed. Started to go. And done good ever since. Yeah. Just keep growing. Absolutely. And, but it's it's a, it's a struggle, but I was determined to make it, mm -hmm. you know, to make everything work. You know, the wife would get upset because she had you guys, you know, didn't see me because I was trying to make a living. When it was slow, I'd go to all the businesses, give them my card, say, hey, I'm new in town if you ever need anything. Mm -hmm. And eventually it worked out. Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not an idle type person anyways. I got to keep busy. Okay, yeah, okay. I gotta be moving all the time. Yep. And uh, it just worked out, and thank God, because like if mom wanted to go out with her girlfriends because she needed to get away from you and your sister. Did you annoy her? Right. Yeah. I can understand. Me too. <laughs> and, you know, I'd take them on a job. Yeah. You guys on a job, and uh, your sister was, you know, two years younger, so she's crying and screaming because she can't see me, and I'm unlocking this car. <laughs> and the lady comes, oh, cute little kids, you know. I said, yeah, the wife wanted out for the night, and I have to do it, but I still need to make money. Yeah. And she gave us an extra 20 bucks way back then, and that was good. Yeah. I mean, I remember so much of my childhood in your uh, Ford Aerostar, the 93. Yep. Right? I still remember going with you to get it at the dealership. Yeah. And the amount of uh, jobs ran yeah. in that thing, sitting there on the weekends. You were and, shotgun. You know, you know my, my kids to this day, they're like, Dad, you don't 
listen to like a ton of like country music, but like anytime a song goes on, like we know that you know the words. <laughs> I'm like, that's what you get for you know riding around with your dad. Right. Doing jobs all the time, you know, hoping because you'd always split the tips with me. Yeah, we got tips. They said, oh, here's 20 bucks. Why don't you take your son and get a pizza? Yeah. And PJ's into pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we'd always split but, the tips. Yeah. yeah. And then your sister would go if you had something else to do, you yeah. know, so I could spend time with you because it was important that I could make a living. Sure. You know, and then once we did well, we I spent a lot more time with you guys. Yeah. Because you got employees, you know, all your basketball, baseball, whatever you guys did, I was always there. Yeah. Because that was the reason I want to be self-employed, to do what I want. Yeah. But at first, the company owns you. Yeah. And there's even seasons as it goes on, a, a, you know, when you own a company, it's right. just going to take over your this life. This time of year is always a little slower than during spring and summer. Yeah. For, up where we are. Yeah. But, and it can be tough, you know. Absolutely. Well, perfect, Ed. You know what? Thank you for sharing the story. It's fun to kind of talk about it. Yeah. And um, I hope everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed. And um, I'd love to know, and I'm sure you would too, yeah. on um, any feedback that you have or questions. Um, it's sure great. So Yeah, because you're going to struggle. You're going to get discouraged. Always be positive and know you can do it. Absolutely. And move forward. Yep, so definitely put those uh, comments in the comment section below. And of course, make sure you include the hashtag LockBoss to automatically get entered in to win one of five free prizes we give away each week on YouTube. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.